Good morning. Hey, George. Hey, come here. Oh, look at this dude. Ah, I'm gonna dig him up out of here. Look at this guy. Say hi, George. Look at George. Look at the camera. Hello, buddy. My wife got me a great dame. Okay, get back under there and go to sleep. Good boy. Sorry to wake you. Yeah, he's going back down. Always wanted one of these dogs. I don't know why. I know they don't live long, but he's cool. Uh, anyways, what is it? Monday morning. I do the money and news report. I usually do it on Sunday, but I'm off this week. Um, and uh, you know, what was it all? Oh. Yeah, I didn't do it yesterday because I started watching this Lonesome Dove series. My wife was talking about for years, seasons, anyways. I'm like, eh, I got time for that. Well. God dang it, she's got it on DVD, and once I started, I couldn't turn it off. I was like until 1.30 in the morning, and I don't stay up past 9, almost never. Anyways, uh, so yeah, and I got all involved in that, and now I, now I can't turn them off. So I'm going to watch that again today, later. Uh, it's kind of a chill day. Uh, this whole week's a chill day, vacation. I mean, I got things to do here and there. Got a glass company coming sometime this morning to replace the window in the Kenworth. We got some chips in there we got to deal with and get them out of there before we get tickets or out of service stuff. So more owner operator stuff as usual. Uh, news, well, I, got, I got nothing really too exciting. Uh, it's Talladega week. I'm going, we're taking the family down to Talladega. Hope to see you guys down there. Hope to meet some of you um, for the CRST company whatever it is, get together. I got all kinds of events and concert and drive the NASCAR. If you're in the million mile club or on the council, whatever, whatever. Now they got just some cool stuff going on. So we're going to go check that out. Uh, only thing really happened in trucking is I'm in the rates. Woohoo! We in the race to the bottom. Like I told you last week. So the market is correcting itself. We are heading into the recession sooner than the experts had thought they called for next year they don't know nothing the experts they cracked me up they never saw the 08 crash coming they never see anything coming uh, they can't they're worse than weather people get out of here but uh yeah it's getting ugly it's a bloodbath i see equipment going up for sale and um uh, yeah we knew this was coming i almost keyword is almost wish i was still in those facebook uh trucking groups i had to get out of those a while back just uh more than I could handle, and, you know, guys like me have been around forever, try to say, ah, uh, you know, and I wouldn't do that. You don't know what you're talking about, boomer. The, the dummy, I'm not a boomer. That was my dad's generation. Anyway, <clears throat> anyways, those Facebook groups are full of the three-year uh, trucking experts that know everything. They don't know nothing, but they know everything. I almost wish I was there just to read the comments now, just to laugh, see what, uh, see what they have to say that when we told you, um, uh, rates would not stay like this. Uh, don't buy that expensive truck or you will be doomed. Well, rates didn't stay like that. And now they're doomed. I imagine they're probably running around screaming that it's my fault, our fault, because we're not taking, if you're taking anything less than three bucks a mile, you're part of the problem. Yeah. Come on, man. been hearing that my whole life. Uh, it's supply and demand. Um, uh, just more things you didn't know about trucking. So if you don't want to haul for less than three bucks a mile, sit at home. Uh, you'll just get your misery over with easier, so quicker. So just go ahead and get it over with. If you're uh, just swinging a three and $4,000 a month truck payment and have a family and everything, you're done, son, you're done, it's over. Uh, just go on and move on to something else uh, because the rates will not support that anymore. All right, we'll do the old add up the envelope, see if we made any money this week. I just went out to North Carolina and back. It's nothing spectacular. Um, it was a good week, man. I had to come out of there at 220 a mile. That's the lowest I've hauled, but um, there's probably coming up here pretty soon. 220, you'll be wanting it. So, you know, it's going to dip way down, flush the system of the flip flops, as I would say, and then it'll come back up to more of a normal, sustainable, probably. Probably landed about the 250 to 270 rate right in there uh, for flatbed stuff, uh, like it always was. And uh, we're just going to go back to normal. But to get to normal, we got to go way down to level off. Because the reason we'll go way down 
it's the same not so smarters that get us got us into this situation buying overpriced trucks they'll be trying to stay afloat it's like someone trying to drown they're just gonna uh, uh, they gotta do they're gonna try not to drown it's a natural reaction but they're gonna drown so but before they drown they'll say oh well, okay i'll haul that for a dollar sixty i'll do that at least it'll get me to next whatever they think the next load will be better they're prolonging the agony guys okay that's all that it's going to come down to but they'll grab anything to try to save their truck and business and i, I mean i don't blame them I'm not being mean. Not all these guys are dumb. They just, they were led astray by people that didn't know what they were talking about. And it's going to be sad. I've seen it countless times in my three and a half decades in this business. But we will race to the bottom and they will haul anything they can haul to try to stay afloat. Once they go under, it will benefit the rest of us. I know that sounds mean, but life's tough, man. Um, and that's just the brutal truth with you. Once... Once those guys are gone, okay, the, the demand for trucks go back up because they're gone. Less trucks, more demand. So you're going to see it go, okay? You got to get through this bottom part first, and it's going to get ugly to the point I may end up parking the truck because um, just because I'm blessed that I could do that. And uh, I always get a text during this. Um, or I might have to go get into hauling a tanker or something food grade. I think it's going to get really ugly in the flatbed. I hope not. Um, but if it gets too bad, I'm not going to run around for a buck 30, buck 40 a mile at $5 a gallon of fuel. I'll just park the truck and uh, go mow yards or something. I don't know. I don't need much money. But uh, anyways, you guys buckle your seat belts because it's going to get ugly for a little bit. All right, we'll see you all in a minute. Let me add up these numbers. All right, we're back with something. Hey, uh, before I did this, I pre-watched this. I'll have my kid put it in, but in case I forget, it's Yellowstone. I'm watching Yellow. I don't know why I said Lonesome Dove. Maybe that was a show she used to like way back in the day. Not sure. So, uh, let's get it done once again. As always, these numbers to me are to me after CRST takes their 25% that no one should give up, even though... They get us more than 25%, more than the spot market, but that's a never ending road. But anyways, these numbers are to me after deductions. So here we go. We started Tuesday morning. So this is uh, just a four day week. Started Tuesday morning, went down to Blytheville, Arkansas, loaded a load of beams going to Wilson, North Carolina. Just uh, wasn't anything heading up into my normal lane. And North Carolina is usually pretty good to me. Wasn't really this trip, but it is what it is. Pay me $2,404.61 at 296 a mile on 811 miles. Then went about 60 miles and we loaded in uh, Oxford, North Carolina, going to Little Rock, Arkansas. Paid me $1,975 at $2.27 a mile on 869 miles. It's two ways to look at that to make one just make you feel better, but 227 is not great, however. I did that in 24 hours, so it's well within my what I try to make a day. So we loaded it one morning and delivered it the next day. Uh, I think I left over there 10 o'clock in the morning, delivered it one or two the next day. Pretty close 24 hour period for two grand. We'll take it. That was my week, guys. I came home from there, from Little Rock to home, 205 miles, and wrapped it up. So pretty easy uh, summary this week. Uh, so those two totals is $4,379.61 for an average of two sixty one dollars a mile on 1,680 loaded miles. They have a total of 270 empty miles, counting the 200-mile deadhead to come home, which, of course, I didn't have to do that. I could have kept working. Uh, so do whatever you want. I've been over the empty miles enough times. I don't count them the same as loaded, but you do with it what you like. So here we go with the deductions. We start with four thousand three hundred seventy-nine dollars and sixty-one cents. We minus three seventy-five. That is my CRST deductions, trailer rent, Quailcom, and whatever. I don't have an escrow account anymore and things like that. Um, watch a couple of you guys' uh, videos, lease purchase guys, and uh, I don't have a lot of those charges, so um, that's why, as I'm not a lease purchase guy for one thing. Anyway, so I don't have a maintenance account, or anything. My total. 375 a week 225 of that is trailer rent the rest is 
plates, uh, permits that you got to buy yearly, uh, 22, 90 or whatever it is at uh, 500 bucks a year. Anyway, they take care of all that and I, they break it down into 52 week payment for you. So that's my plates, uh, my, uh, permits, my bobtail insurance, insuring my truck for 50 grand for, uh, uh, collision or whatever it is, uh, the Qualcomm charges all of it, the whole kit and caboodle, 375. I had $1,807.24 in fuel before uh, discounts and whatnot. Remember, that's receipt totals on credit price. I pay cash minus discount. Uh, so you get a couple hundred bucks off that. I could pretty confidently say it was about $1,600, but I give you what I have. So there's no way for me to know that uh, for another week or so till it all comes through the system. I uh, then paid uh, $18.66 to park somewhere. I don't remember. Then I had to pay for a shower. I went to a TA and I don't know if he did it wrong, but I thought I had shower credits or enough points on there. Whatever. It's a write-off. 16 bucks for a shower. Uh, the edge protectors, if you watch that video, Idiots are costing me money. You'll know what that's all about. I had to buy some 12 inch edge protectors. And in that video, I said a hundred bucks as he quoted me about a hundred bucks over the phone, but little things like this that, you know, when you're leased, these little things keep adding up and adding up. When I actually got there, the list price was 509 each. Uh, but since I told him I'm leased to CRST, he sold them to me for 362 and no sales tax. So it wasn't a, a hundred or a little over. It was $77 and 65 cents is what I paid for those edge protectors. Go to the credit card. I had $67 and 93 cents worth the toll and pre-pass charges. And then I'll go ahead and throw it in there. And then they haven't got here yet. I'm putting that windshield in. That's 300 bucks. They told me so. After all of that, my net profit uh, for the week on a little four-day, two, two, whatever, there and back, easy money. Uh, after all those expenses, $1,717.13. Still better than a company driver, if you ask me. But if you've been following these videos, I think in the last... Oh, speak of the devil. Not my wife, either. <laughs> She just came in telling me that they'll be here in 15 minutes, so I got to go open the shop and get ready for them. But in the last four weeks, uh, I don't have it added up, but I know last the previous two weeks was eight grand, four grand a week, pretty much, and then they got this, uh, so that's ninety. So, so we're over ten thousand dollars net in the last 30 days. But remember. I don't have a truck payment. I have to save my money for repairs and things like that. The tax man cometh. Uh, so you've got to get creative right now. I'm having a temperature controlled parts room built in my shop. It's cost me about 2,500 bucks. Coincidentally, it has a winch and everything that I can lift deer up and skin it. And when we catch fish, I can go in there and it's nice and cool and cut them up and package them. But it's also, you know, you can store parts in there. It's part of my shop. You know, I don't want those parts rusting. All right. Anyways. Tell you all that to tell you these numbers. Oh, yeah, you know, he's made 10 grand this month. Okay, but I have to divert a lot of that or do something with it or the tax man take it. Okay, and this last month, old Ellie's been great. Well, she hasn't broke down. We ain't put no money in her, but next week could be three grand like that. So this is where a lot of owner operators getting, you know, where that money is it's in the bank. Did I go out and buy a Hellcat? No. Did I go on some fancy vacation? Absolutely not. Did I buy some new side by side? No. That's where you're getting money. You get 10, 20 grand, 30 grand, you string those together for three months. Like, 30 grand, you look in your bank, I got $20,000, let's go buy something. You will be in trouble, okay? Don't look at your bank account. My wife don't like me to look at it because then I start thinking that way. Oh, look at that. Uh, I want this and that. No, no, no. So she keeps me in line, all right? You gotta, you gotta remember, things come up. Rainy day funds. It ain't nothing to drop five, 10 grand on a truck and a repair especially with this emissions crap. So budget your money and be careful. All right, y'all, that's all I got. I'll try to do some videos down in Talladega. I'm gonna try to do some videos this week because I'm off all week. I'm gonna try to do the lanes. I'm gonna try to do uh, another load board video. I know you guys love that. I'm gonna try my best. I'm gonna try to do best pre-emission motor and best current motor in my opinion. Uh, will I get to all those? Absolutely not. Will I get to one or two? I'll give it my best go. All right, y'all. God bless you. Bye now.